So we're driving to, no, not Kota Kinabalu, no, Magna, oh God. We're driving from Kudat to Kota Kinabalu, it's about 180 kilometers. You take about three hours through quite windy roads, through the rainforest and the plantations. Um, this is the view. I'm enjoying the drive. It's, it was raining, it's now beautiful sunshine. And I would ha normally have a nice clear view out the window, but there's this stupid sun visor thing that they insist on sticking on their windscreens, which comes down so far that I have to sit like this in order to see out of it, very annoying. Um, but aside from that, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Apart from getting stuck behind the old bloody slow truck, because of course it's all single lane, so. Oh yeah, we're going to pick up Antifowl. So we are planning to haul out. In fact, we were scheduled to haul out on Saturday, which is three days away, but we've decided to delay it till Monday, which gives us time to go to KK, pick up our paint, and pick up a new dripless seal that we've had delivered from Singapore. The current situation, not that we want to talk about it with the whole COVID thing, is that there has been a spike in KK, which is quite unusual because it's normally green or yellow, um, and they think it might go up to red, so there was a bit of a deal with the possibility of a lockdown in KK. If that happened, we wouldn't have been able to get our anti-foul paint, our dripless seal, and that meant we wouldn't have been able to have hauled out. So, looks like this truck's turning off. Hurrah! We haven't got any footage of the trip to KK itself, because to be honest, it's a little bit boring, a little bit rushed, and we were really focused. What we want to do in this video is discuss the preparation that you need to do before you haul out. And yeah, you do need to do a bit of preparation, if possible. Depends rather on where you are, on what chandry facilities there are available to you, but the following are the sorts of things you need to be thinking about. First is anti-foul. Are you going to be anti-fouling your well, more than likely, I think you will be. I mean, that's normally the primary reason for hauling out is anti-fouling. And uh, quite often this has to be ordered in beforehand, especially around these parts, and especially if you're after a particular type of anti-foul. Uh, not only that, of course, think of all the tools that are required to go with that preparation and application of the anti-foul. Things like sandpaper. Uh, it may be that the boatyard sells sandpaper. It might be inferior quality as we found out. So perhaps you may, may need to buy that beforehand. Protective suits. Masks, goggles. And blue tape, yes. painter's tape. Uh, again, we really struggled to find that in Kudat, so we had to order it online in rolls of 10. Yeah, so we've still got a lot of blue tape. <laughs> Have on board loads of cleaning products. You're probably going to use more than you think you are, so just stock up and they'll be useful once you've left the yard anyway. We found that MagiClean, which is a spray that we buy here on Borneo, and I don't know if you can get it where you are, really, really good for taking off the grease and the oil stains on the top side. So that was a breakthrough this time. As well as, as those kinds of things, you need to have your brushes and your, your scourers. Uh, oh gosh, scrapers, scrapers all, and plenty of all of those things, all on standby for when you haul out. Next up we have specialist parts. This could be another reason why you're going to be hauling out. And these specialist parts will need to be ordered beforehand. The reason why we're hauling out is because we want to change our dripless seal, among other things. This should be changed every few years. It's not available locally, so we had to order it in via Singapore. Now, if there are certain specialist tools and uh, things that you need for your boat project whilst on the hard, if you can't get hold of them, it can hold up your entire project. And cost you a lot of money. Exactly. Mm. I mean, in the refit, we were, throughout the whole refit, we were constantly ordering things in from abroad 
but uh, kind of with the foresight of knowing that the next project is going to require this specialist part. So have in your mind a good idea of what it is you're going to need before starting those jobs. There's more to think about, but we'll just have one of those annoying mid-roll ads first. Don't forget to schedule your lift out time with the yard. They're not always aware of problems like tides and currents, so we always try to do it during slack water. And with the particular yard we're about to go to, you really couldn't get them on the phone, so we physically went to the yard, spoke to the man who'd be dealing with the haul out and said, we're anchored just there, we're coming in tomorrow, is that okay? Yeah, great, they said. Also, uh, seasonal weather patterns as well, don't forget that, that could have an impact on some of the out outside jobs that you're planning to do whilst in the yard. Liz mentioned talking to the yard. Well, while you're talking to the yard, you should get a good idea of what they can and can't do. Can they do gel coat repair? Uh, what's the workshop like? What kind of facilities do they have there? Maybe you need specialist aluminium welding, carpentry, all of these kind of jobs. You should have a clear idea about what you can expect from the yard and what you should be expecting to source yourselves. Make sure you're aware of what the rules and regulations are in the boatyard. Sometimes you're not allowed to stay on your boat, so you'll need to find accommodation outside the yard and probably transport as well. And have a look at the loo and the toilets. I know it doesn't sound important, but blimey, it is important because you really need, need both those things. Mm, yes, you'll be showering a lot because mm. it's very hot and sweaty, certainly in this part of the world. Yeah. The other thing you should think about are the rates and what yeah. you're actually paying for. Does uh, the bill include haul out? Does it include dropping back in? Does it include water and electricity? Have a very good idea of the expectations of what is included in your final bill. From our experience, you never stay in the yard for the amount of time that you thought. Very, very occasionally we've done that. Quite often it goes on a bit. So what I tend to do with the bills is just pay them weekly so you're not landed one, with one huge sum at the end. And also you're keeping track that you're being billed the correct amount of money. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw and make sure you're subscribed and have tapped that notification bell so that you know when our... Oh, today we're hauling out. In fact, we're hauling out in about half an hour. Uh, just got to take the lines off the breakwater there and motor 150 metres over to the boatyard. Let's get going. There he goes. I'm going to take this one off first, port side. Wind's coming from that side, so it's nice and loose. I'm going to have to go because I'm going to have to take the line from him now. So okay, we've got both lines in. We're just attached with the anchor at the front here. Got to be a little bit careful because we've got a boat quite close to us. So we just need to uh, put the dinghy up now and then weigh anchor. Okay, lines are off and we're now floating backwards. Looks like we're well clear of Alistair. He was our new neighbor. And this is just getting a, the lines ready to throw out. We're gonna weigh anchor and head over there. Well, it's a nice greeting, isn't it? We're in the slip and first person we see is Roy. To be honest, I think he's the only one that actually knows what he's doing with the line. So unusually we're chocked up on concrete blocks. I'm just laughing at this guy. I don't know if he's just practicing or what. 
Well, the older boy is a bit more of an expert in his forklift, but uh, these are what they use to hold the boat up, which I've never seen before. Make sure you're aware of what the facilities and rules are in the yard. Sometimes you're not allowed to stay on your bike. Bike? <laughs> 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 on your bike. <laughs> oh dear. Make sure you're familiar with your <laughs> Stop it. <laughs>